I'm Lori Sperry. I'm a graduating senior at the University of Washington Communications. I'm also a city council member. Um, my name is Sean Fraser. I'm an undergraduate student in the communications department, and I'm also a project manager at Linster Creative, which is a PR firm in Seattle. My name is Conrad Polovicki. I'm a recent graduate here from the University of Washington's Department of um, Communication. I am currently working in public relations with a focus on digital and tech PR. And our challenge was to provide the government employees with guidance that helps them use choose the social media tools for the audience they're trying to reach. And so in order to fulfill that ch challenge, we came up with a social media guidebook. And what we did was we did three things. First thing we did was talk to, to Jeremy from WashDOT, which we are very thankful for his guidance. And we reviewed the general practice, best practices guides for Facebook, Twitter, and for, um, I guess there really isn't one for YouTube. Then we uh, conducted original market research, and then finally we looked at the actual, uh, what WashDOT is doing, what seems to be working, and then we compiled it all into a newly printed guide uh, to provide uh, for, for WashDOT. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn right. it over to Sean. I'll talk a little bit about the market research aspect of this. We wanted to ensure that all of our recommendations were backed up by data that said how people were engaging with the WSDUT on social media and what platforms they would turn to for specific types of information. So one of the most clear findings was that Facebook would be the first social media that people would go to um, for different WSDUT information. It was an overwhelming majority. In fact, 58% of people who responded to the survey on average said they would visit Facebook if they wanted to find traffic information. And uh, it went down a little bit for things like driving tips and mountain pass information for which they turned a little more to Twitter and YouTube. But overwhelmingly, people said that they would go to Facebook to find info from WSDOT. Also, um, we found out that Facebook was the social media platform that people are most aware of with the WSDOT. 27% of people are um, aware that WSDOT has a Facebook presence and compared to only 20% are aware that they had a um, Twitter presence and it was about 19% for YouTube. And then 34% of the people who responded said they weren't aware that the WSDOT was on social media at all. 34% is a really small number for people, which is great. It shows there's a lot of awareness for WSDOT. However, only 10% of our respondents actually followed or engaged with WSDOT online. So we saw that disconnect and uh, our recommendations aim at driving people towards engagement a little bit more. We also discovered that the majority of people who do engage with WSDOT merely read the posts and don't necessarily interact. So um, in a little bit we'll talk about what we found drives interaction. Also driving conditions are the most sought after information on WSDOT social media platforms especially traffic conditions, and we found that a few people actually asked that if there are upcoming projects, they love looking to social media to be warned for future things that may affect their commute. Also, the majority of the people find posts helpful, which is great for you guys. It means that uh, people are enjoying your content and feeling that it helps them with their daily commute. Drivers also would like to see more posts about accidents or traffic incidents. And finally, the WSDOT social media presence is primarily thought of as informative. So when people um, responded um, to a question that had a lot of different words, um, saying what do you associate with the WSDOT, those included fun, relatable, informative, um, actually had 53% of, uh, of the responders associated that with the WSDOT. All right, Facebook. So in today's uh, day and age, people are increasingly turning to social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Pinterest to get information and just interact and engage with people and um, brands that they're interested in. So we examined the uh, WashDOT's Facebook page. Currently the page has 4,397 likes as of about 40 minutes ago, so that's a pretty up-to-date number for you guys. Um, the page includes 16 photo albums, with a whole lot of content. Uh, right here on the slide you can see a picture of a little bird that apparently was found somewhere. And at the very top of the picture it says caption contest. What do you think this little guy is thinking? This is an example of a post that received fairly high engagement on Facebook. 
As you can see down here, 32 people liked this and 195 people commented on the picture. That's a pretty high number, especially when you look at other, other posts, other photos. <coughs> this picture drew people's attention, it was engaging, and it was highly talked about. I'm now going to cover a little bit about some of the <coughs> Facebook best practices that we suggested and that we determined through our research and through examining existing practices. So here are just a few best practices. I'll talk about a couple more now and then there are a lot more in our guide. So it is important to, uh, it, to uh, sorry, it is important to attempt to interact and engage with users. Users are not going to want to come back to the page if all they're just getting is a whoops, constant stream of information. They want people to be replying to their comments. They want people to be asking questions. They want to know that their feedback is appreciated. They want you to reply back to what they say, to mention them, to include them in tags. Um, it is important to observe and adjust postings for the audience, so kind of see what's working, what isn't working. As our, our, research, as our research in our book will tell you, people respond very positively to photographs. So if you see that, you know, post photographs. If there are interesting things that you can post a picture of instead of trying to describe, definitely do that. Another really important one of our findings is that cross-promotion across other social media platforms is very important for just raising awareness of your presence. So you can use Facebook to link to Twitter, you can use Twitter to link back to Facebook, your YouTube videos can link back to all the platforms. It's important to just be promoting that as much as you can because this day, in this day and age, more and more people are using these platforms, so it's important to know that they can find relevant and exciting information on these platforms. Just some other basic uh, quick reference points that we came up with were about post frequency and when to post. There is a lot of information out on the website and on the internet about when you should be posting, when the like, ideal post time is. Our research kind of showed that although there is a lot of research out there, your average person will be working nine to five and they may not be able to be checking the website or the social media platform very frequently throughout their workday for information. So posting maybe after they're off work, weekends, or maybe a couple posts during the day, but there isn't really a huge like time you always should be posting. Varying it would be helpful and just kind of being aware of when people are available, when they're working and then determining again what works and what doesn't work and making sure to tailor your posts to that. Then Twitter. So the Watchdot has multiple Twitter handles. This is just a few of them. For this analysis, we focused on the main handle, which is at Watchdot. Some best practices that we found for Twitter were that it's very important to leave room for retweets so people can engage with the content by retweeting what they see. Also, it's important to incorporate hashtags. A hashtag is something that you can use at the end of a tweet and it kind of helps organize information and people can do searches for the hashtags and they can relate back to that. It is important, however, to realize that an inappropriate hashtag could tie you into other things they probably don't want to be associated with, so just make sure to be always carefully monitoring that and, take, and making sure that it's going the right way that you want it to be going. And then again, using Twitter to cross-promote across other, other platforms. And I'm going to hand it over to Lori now for YouTube. Thank you. Well, this actually is a current uh, uh, picture of the uh, YouTube channel that Watchdot maintains. And that video, I haven't watched it yet, but it's uh, of a time lapse of the 522 uh, bridge construction. So it's a part of it that was done recently. So showing the public what is actually happening. And so what I actually did, besides watching a lot of your YouTube videos, was I took a top uh, I looked at the most viewed and tried to analyze why they were popular and as far as content and then I looked at the least viewed and compared them to. And so this is the top five. And the first two are basically disaster simulations, which is interesting. Um, and you can kind of see why that um, the first one, one of the comments, that the, the first one, the top one is the Alaska Way Viaduct one. And that one was not originally done for YouTube or anything like that. It was actually a simulation that was trying to uh, understand what would happen if there was an earthquake. And of course, it's all uh, in preparation for the replacement of the viaduct, which is, is in progress now. And uh, so it was uh, released in response to a public information request. and be the reason it wasn't originally released to the public because they felt that it was too scary. And so it ended up being the top viewed video. And some of the comments are kind of interesting because every once in a while you'll see that people will say, did this really happen? Is this real? And so that shows that you have to kind of keep saying, no, this is just a simulation. 
the other two, so the first two are obviously essentially like disaster movies that could really happen. The second, the, la the last ones are all snow, which I thought was interesting, but I guess in the Puget Sound, snow was a big deal. And of course, this one about putting on tire chains, we don't have to do it very often, so it shows how that might create a lot of interest at that time. Well, how do I do this? Go to YouTube. Um, the next thing that uh, we noticed was I started seeing a trend, and, and I tried to describe it as giving people a, a window or a visualization of something that they wouldn't normally see. So obviously things like you know the 522 bridge falling apart or you know the viaduct. Obviously that's a, a computer simulated visualization. So it's giving some it's giving fresh content. And then of course um, there's a lot of uh, the general YouTube. They usually the general rule is you know three minutes or less. Well the top video is seven minutes long. And so what I said was make it long, long enough but not too long. And when I did compare some of the least viewed videos to the top viewed videos. It's very difficult to say, but we did it. Um, some of them were kind of slow and kind of overly long, and you could see where just some simple editing might help those, that kind of thing. And then finally, to use it to tell a story, and I think that there's a story on multiple levels. Um, one of the things the agency has done really well, WashDOT has done well, is showing what they're doing with avalanche control, showing how the workers are doing things, showing how the projects are being built. So it tells a story on many levels. Um, one of the things that we found, I guess you never really know how a project like this is going to come out until you get to the end. And after spending the time that we did reviewing all of the social media use that WashDOT is doing, what we found is, is it's robust, it is innovative, it is very much, um, you know, I have some government experience and it's very innovative for a government agency to have this level of interaction with the public. And so I, I thought it would be fun to conclude with a paraphrase of a quote I found on a Facebook page. And this is in response to when the first uh, 520 bridge visualization project, uh, the pictures came out. And, you know, we've been hearing about the bridge for years and now, you know, this is what it's going to look like. And someone wrote, you guys make boring stuff interesting. And I think, you know, that is probably one of the best compliments an agency could have, is that they're making boring stuff interesting. So we thank you very much. I'm sure there are questions. And uh, thank you.